her bathroom, and we have no scope of work or budget for the Martin House itself. So what is that going to be? A million dollars? I mean, I know you can't answer yeah. this because that you were asked to budget that to do that. I've been trying to get figures from the town. I can't sure. get any scope of work, how the work is going to be done, who's going to do it. Is it going to be piecemeal, like they're doing now? Yeah. I, I might just add a quick comment. Uh, while it is true that we don't know much about the Martin House outside the addition that we've been charged to do, um, right. because we know that there's systems in the building, uh, we have added systems for the addition. So if there were holistic systems added to the house, mechanical, plumbing, and, and electrical and things, um, you know, the price of that addition would likely move, move down because we are, we're just looking at our kind of little tiny lens and we have to do it for code, so. Well, you're doing it for code and that brings up another thing. You have the bathrooms that are off the main house, right? Yes, that's and right. And the main house is not handicapped accessible. So that's a whole it, other thing. It will be. I'm trying to get answers from that, and yeah. I can't get any answers. It, nobody is asking me that question. The, it absolutely would be handicapped accessible. That's why well, could you rework the Let us know what the cost is going to be in a scope of work. That's all I'm asking for, a scope of work on the Martin House and a final course. I'd be glad to share that with you if you want to come and talk. Well, I want to share it with the public. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to. I, I want. I want to say something kind of constructive. Um, Go for it. Because I, I do own a property very close to this, and uh, and I want to talk about the intersection. I don't want to talk about the Gordon Building. I want to talk about something that probably needs to be addressed. <laughs> um, I, I've read a couple studies over the past couple of days about roundabouts, and there's a lot of uh, good things about them. Uh, they cut down on major accidents by 75%. Uh, they can push 20% more traffic through them. Um, so there are some, some good things about roundabouts. And there's no question that that intersection is a problem. A lot of y'all don't work right there. Uh, these town people do. But every morning the traffic gets backed up all the way to the Gray Gables. And we're getting ready to build a shopping center down the road. And that's just going to increase the traffic. And one of the things that I'm concerned about that I think needs to be taken in consideration, especially with the future view and everybody wants to make this a more of a pedestrian friendly uh, area, and that is uh, by far the studies that I read, and especially about the many roundabouts, and that is, is it created a, a dangerous, a more dangerous environment for pedestrians. Uh, the reason why is because a mini roundabout is uh, just, it's a smaller circumference, and so a human wanting to, to cross the street has less time to, you know, make the dash. There's no signals. You're not usually putting a right turn signal on when you're, when you're in a roundabout. And I've traveled all my life, and I've gone around too many of them. But um, I just want you to take in consideration that. Um, uh, the suggestion actually is, and I don't like it, um, when you're constricted by room and you have to implement a mini roundabout, and you are going to have heavy pedestrian, uh, you, you got to stick with the lights. Um, that's the safest way. And so I, I ask you to look at your studies in regards to many roundabouts and heavy pedestrian traffic. Um, it's, it, there's, there's not heavy pedestrian traffic, but if your dream comes true and you want to restore the Gordon building, I think that has to be addressed first. Because you're not going to take school children and cross them across the road. You're going to have a lot of uh, problems. And uh, 150 is, an, is a state highway, right. and it's full of trucks and cars and traffic. I'd like to ask Elizabeth McCullough. Elizabeth was on town council when the decision was made to purchase this property. So let's go back to the beginning. Well, I, d I would just like to say I did vote for purchasing um, the Martin House and the Gordon property. Um, I did not have $3.8 million in my mind when I made that vote, just for the public to know. Um, I am all for historic preservation. I think we have to be common sense oriented, and I think this is um, is overkill. So I think I mean I know I've done a lot of um, building projects. I love my husband to death, but he loves to build, and um, <laughs> in doing so, you always spend more than you think. It's always harder than it looks in the beginning. There are so many roadblocks in the way. So I would just say, I think the most important thing is, I've learned in my last project, is functionality is, 
is why you're building something or redoing something, and why are we doing this? Um, so one place was a, was a meeting space, um, and I do think we need a nicer meeting space. I think um, we definitely need more comfortable chairs, <laughs> and I think we can afford that. But I think this figure that's been thrown out, I just think um, when you go to a contract, you say, I want to do this, you have to give them a budget. Um, it's only fair to the architects to have something to work with so they know how much something's going to cost. Um, the same thing goes for a contractor. You kind of have to say, I, I want to spend about X number of dollars. Um, because if you just give them the world, I mean, you know, there's a lot of great things out there. And, but I think we have to be... Um, we have to be considerate of the town funds and what people want. We are a rural town, um, and I think people have kind of, I don't want to say lower expectations, but I don't think they want to spend um, the kind of money we're talking about tonight. So, but I do love the roundabout idea. I don't know about these studies Pat's talking about, but I love them in Europe. They're fabulous. <laughs> I haven't, um, you know, walked across them. I haven't seen a lot of pedestrian crossings. So when you were talking about it tonight, my mind was trying to figure out how I would come down Summerfield Road with my horse trailer and do that. I don't know how that would work, but I mean, your video showed it. It does. So that that looks like a great idea. Okay. <coughs> I got a couple of questions and then uh, I got something I want to address to say to the council. Uh, I'd like to know, and you don't need to answer right now, but I'd like to know where that intersection was that was in the video. Um, and then, uh, since we're talking about you know, building a town hall for purposes of public meetings, I think uh, it'd be very important to have a uh, attendance roster to know what you're trying to meet. You know, why would we build a 96? seat uh, meeting hall when the attendance has been under 15 people, probably less than 10 people on average for the last 10 years. Uh, that's a question. And then uh, I sat on the comp plan for the full two years, along with 20 other individuals. And uh, I pulled out the comp plan again. And when this property was being bought, I made this statement. And I'm going to make this statement again. Uh, the comp plan talks about historic preservation policy area for historic preservation. And uh, there's seven policies, and six of those policies say the town shall encourage. It doesn't say the town will buy or purchase or take ownership of or take responsibility for, bankroll, subsidize, guarantee, acquire, procure, or invest in historic preservation. I think we're all preservation as far as our content is concerned. And uh, I think if we're going to build a town hall, for purpose of having uh, meeting space and uh, new offices and whatnot. I don't like the idea, but I think if the town citizens would be best served if their money is spent acquiring new property and building a modest building that is extremely functional, easy access, and egress, egress. And uh, it, no, this, is not, this is not a good location for a town hall meeting space. Yeah, yeah. just a second, we get over. Right. Bill North, go ahead. Yeah, I think my voice is loud enough, <laughs> and I hope it is. You know, in reviewing what we saw, it seemed like to me this is a government-centric project. It's all about government. Yeah. It's not about the citizens. And I'd like to know, and I did the math, it's 7,000 square feet, that's about $523 a square foot for the renovation and the upfit of that Gordon building. But what could I get for 3.7 million somewhere else in a better location like you're saying? Uh, you know, and I do, I've been through plenty of roundabouts, I love them. Uh, but I just know the traffic, it backs up on Summerfield Road as everybody's trying to race them home from school and getting off work. That circle is going to, uh, it's going to be absolutely full. And young man, I'd like to know, how far did that tractor trailer, how much did he encroach on that red pan out the center? Was he over about halfway over? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, he made the roundabouts that whole um, inside island, I mean, mile of where, where they basically, they, they make the same move that they basically do now, but they go over that median. I'm just knowing how much of the median did they? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have a truck. I mean, that's something that certainly look at it and any as part of the design you always look at the truck turning movements to make sure there's not going to be any issues and how that partial design process to get some maneuvers around make sure the pedestrian vehicles and hopefully the 
emergency vehicles for many miles. And I have one other comment to this. We already have a museum. It's in the town hall. And I think maybe the current town manager has his old furniture stored there. That's what I've heard. So we have a museum, and we want to create another museum across the street. And I've been through that building. You know, it's all brick walls. And I think in very poor condition. The contractor that came in, they chopped up the floors near every chimney and went and put brick and block and treated boards all under there. It looked like uh, an amateur did it. And I have no idea why they left it in the condition where you could actually fall in those holes. But I kind of would like to raise a question with Town Summerfield. You know, how many museums do you need? And how much money are you willing to spend? Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, that was wonderful. I'm Gary Graham, Hillsdale Light, for the Fairfax I'm glad this gentleman went before me because he basically said the same thing I did. I didn't have a calculator, but I thought it was around $500 a square foot, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Nothing personal against anybody. When you can go out and, and buy a building, a brand new building, for seven or ten, twelve thousand square foot, and come in a lot cheaper and have better parking access. So I think it's great to have a quaint town, Summerfield, but I think in this case it's not even applicable to what the town's about. And if you're going to do that, just build a new town hall. And also, I didn't get how many bathrooms were in. Uh, there are uh, men's and women's on each. Floor is required by the building code. Sorry. And men's and women's on each floor is required by the building code. And I can speak to the point about uh, a new building if you might. Put out some and of the Did you figure in skylights? Uh, is that not correct? Yeah, I think we can certainly have some skylights to, to bring in there. Yeah. You did. Uh, I think we can. I, oh, I oh, I'm sorry. Know, excuse me. If that's what you're suggesting. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that my short long is it? You need to build a new building and that'll last you 50 to 75 years instead of taking one. But spend yeah. that kind of money. I get, so here's a little bit about what's going on in, in the construction world. And we actually did look at it uh, with our cost and so I, I said, seems high to me too, right? Um, and uh, I said, well, what would a new building cost of the same program that we've used? And they came back and said, it's not going to be that much different, around 3.3. And what's happening, and there's, there's, there's some micro and macro things happening in the construction market. One, uh, the market is flooded with work. And we've got a lot of state bonds coming out, and it's, it's not, every project at the state level right now is over budget when it goes out to bid because they haven't done very good cost estimating on, on the back side, or they estimated many years ago. So you're actually getting school projects, down and dirty school projects, coming back at $450 a foot, whereas several years ago, they could have built for $250. I will tell you, five years ago, uh, the cost that we gave for this building probably would be about half. There have been uh, the, the cost escalation on an annual basis uh, the last 12 months has been 12 percent, and that is a continued trajectory. Um, there are a lot of things happening in the market. We have a uh, wall board, gypsum wall board. From last year, 2017 to 2018, has gone up 18 to 20 percent. And these are, these are actually from, from actual companies. That's hurricane. That That's hurricane. Yeah, exactly. TVC, all these things up 5, 5 to 7 percent. You got natural disasters as well as a flood of work, as well as a severe lack of labor. You know, there's a severe uh, labor shortage in this region and throughout the U.S. Mm -hmm. So that's driven up things like the cost of brick. Uh, 12, over 12 month period, the cost to install brick has gone from $14 a square foot to $30 a square foot. Well, I, I wasn't particularly wanted to get into, you know, what the bridge Well, this is some of the background that even my, new my, building. My point to town council is please go get three or four architects and pay some money 
and get them to design the building after you've already given specifications yeah. on how many bathrooms <coughs> and uh, how many uh, auditorium do we need and that kind of stuff. First, get the bring to the, the town council meeting what the definition of the building is needed for and what it should encompass, and then get at least three bids on what that would cost to be. So that that's my. I'm just fat last when I saw three three point <coughs> seven million dollars. Yeah, I can't disagree. Three point two. But we were pleased with that. Oh, I thought it was three point two. So, so, like, so like you're saying that the new restoration per square foot nowadays is 500 plus? Because I redid the gables for 170. I mean, how long ago? Please been on project. 2003. 2003, yeah. Add 12 percent. You know, okay, go ahead. Increase it every year. I'll, I'll sell them. I'll sell them the gables for 3.7 million. Right. Yeah, maybe you change, 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 change. Oh, it's just not 500 and something dollars. Yeah, so that was an early question, and we did we did look at that for the town, and uh, we spoke because we have done uh, store tax credit projects in the past. Um, so we looked at that. We looked at uh, grants and things that are out there at the state level and federal level. Um, the short short side of it is the grants that are available are not currently funded by Congress, and they all get funneled from the federal government through the state to the local. Um, the grants are quite small, under 15000 usually. Uh, the federal tax credit was held up through the last budget at the federal and the state level, and it is still in place. Um, as a municipality, you can't directly take advantage of that. Um, there is a possibility through a public-private partnership to take advantage of that if the town is interested. Um, it's not a straightforward process but it could yield uh, up to 35, 40% of the hard costs. So that is It's not, you know, not the ideal setup, right? 
But we thought it's kind of interesting because it's also a very intimate and small town feel once you're in there. And so there is something to the historical aspect that makes it very unique um, to, to see. But, uh, it, you know, we felt like that could be an asset. Just a couple. Your name? My name's Sean Dwyer. Um, I think one of the things I want to say about it, I think the Gordon Bill is Gordon's Bill. I mean, it's, it's, it's truly a historic building. Um, from the exterior, it's, it's got to be one of a kind. Interior, I think, based on what we saw up there, and I realize there are early renditions of how it might look, but the whole notion of having second floor viewing galleries with glass panes and, and, and railings and things like that, I'm afraid by the time it's done, it's not going to be Gordon's building. Now you get inside, only when you see it from the outside. Other thing that I wanted to just make mention of, $3.7 million to rent the community center 29,700 times. Just to put that, just to put that in, in, in perspective. Um, also just wanted to make one comment about the roundabouts. The one in Maryland that you, that you showed seemed to have really good visibility coming in from all sides. The clearance is very level, very flat. It's not what we have here. We're going to have cars running up, coming up from 220, running over the tops of each other, running over the tops of that 55 foot inscribed you know, diameter and that, that centerpiece. I also give it about two winters, and it's going to look like it's torn to pieces. You've never seen our snow plots. <laughs> they can't make that turn, and they won't. So you're going to end up with all that nice. Stamped concrete or whatever it is, mm -hmm. torn pieces. This is my thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are excellent. I really appreciate it. This is the first public meeting that we've had. Mm -hmm. We won't let you do that. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Cooks, and I understand that this is one of the most congested areas, and I've lived with it for all my life. And I don't understand. I was taught that the form should follow the function given to the space. I do not understand the function of the house. So I don't know how to adapt this form. The Gordon Building is charming and exceptional just as it sits. I cannot believe the top-notch architectural firm, which I know Cube has an excellent reputation, would suggest the total annihilation of that building when we have so little in this town. And I don't understand why we're taking one of the most dense areas and one of the most over-trafficked areas and adding more density to a space that's already overcrowded. Where's the septic systems? Where's the water systems? Where's the parking systems? Summerfield is a very mixed bag. They want us to be progressive. But yet they're confining us to the old, to the antique, to the poorly adaptable space. I am absolutely amazed that this is what our town would choose to do for the next 50, 100 years. This should be for the people, not the government not the employees. I don't think that our government and our employees of Somerville are going to be happy until they've taken every single thing that we treasure away from this town. Find you a field somewhere. It's about the people, not you. Won't be, never has been, never will be. Take what little charm we have. Tear it up, slice it up, put an elevator, put some lamination, put a catwalk. That's just not what we're about. This is not Lego land. We don't want it to be. We want little grandchildren and children to be able to walk that intersection. I want to know that it's all going to come to a stop and the children can get across. I would like to see both of these buildings, many people want to see in that corner store. It has been shut up. It is delightful. I don't know when we procured it, but it's not even been cleaned up. 
old gas cans and trash laying around. Along with antique signs, the original tables, the original paint shelves, the nice old crusty brick hard pine floors that are almost perfect condition, staircase that doesn't squeak, beautiful light that th flows through the place. I would like to see an open house on both buildings. If those buildings merit all of this expense, they, they ought to merit an uh, open house for everyone in the town to be able to go in as they are now. I think they will find a Gordon building which was well maintained for many years. I think they would find it utterly charming. And I think the idea of it being just ripped and snorted and whatever you do in San Diego or Minneapolis or uh, maybe Starmount or maybe uh, Carborough, uh, I think the people should be able to go into the grocery store and look at it. See what you're going to lose. See what you will never have again. I think they should go into the Martin House. Understand the simplicity of the structure. Understand the simplicity of the old rough sawn baseboards. And the brick, I'm very concerned, have been most of my life about the brick. I believe that that solid brick structure is from a Moravian early design where the, all of the interior walls are brick. These bricks were fairly poorly molded. The mortar has been a problem since the house was built. I don't believe the walls are stable. They never have been stable. They've been poorly maintained. I believe the vibration of London of this intersection will bring those walls down. I don't understand how anybody could give the brick work on that. And, and the walls are, that mortar, I don't believe has lime in it. The only thing will harden the lime the border is lime, it doesn't have any. And then all of the interior walls are brick. They all lack lime. What's going to hold them up? Has there been any stabilization testing done on those walls? I keep saying when I see all the big trucks and everything going down now, retail road, we have Doggett Brothers, Long Brothers, good Lord, everything known to man. I've stood on that corner and felt the wall just shake. So what kind of stability tests have been done on that building? And how many house museums have failed all over this country? Richmond, Kernersville, you name it, they're closing every day because nobody cares about a house museum anymore. Very few come. So I think we need to revisit this entire thing, but I would like to have a simple open house where the people of Summerfield can come and look at these structures and make their own, make, make a truly involved decision about where we go from here. I don't think people realize the world-class expertise that you bring to this. And when you were inside the Gordon Building, we were so excited about it. It was so much fun to be there with you. <coughs> one, just one question, and then we've got to get back to the comments. I'm sorry, go ahead. Quick comment. Sure. Um, I can't speak to the Martin House, but the, uh, the, uh, I mean, I too think there's some amazing things inside that, that building. We've taken inventory. We've drawn the shelves, actually. We know the signs that are in there. Um, and we're, we want to keep the floor in place. We think that's an asset. We want to keep the ceiling in place. We think that's an asset. Uh, structurally, by good, the things do have to be reinforced. But we would take it off and put it back on. Um, you know, the town did have a, an earlier structural assessment that, that said that all should all be removed things should be in place, but um, that's not the way we want to do it. We really believe in authenticity. We want to expose the brick, we want to keep those finishes that are in place. Even the, the paint, um, if there is a great charm, there's a great history to that. Um, that when you look at the brick, uh, you're entirely correct that there's no lime in that brick. Um, and that's just because of this area. You know, those bricks I think were molded in the back lot or something like that, right, right around the corner. Uh, so we had begun to look at uh, a sealer for the brick to, to prevent uh, further deterioration uh, of that brick. But, um, and and you're, you're also correct in that some of the, uh, the building is in pretty good shape, but some of the uh, repairs that have happened over time have been the, the incorrect type of mortar, which actually can cause uh, further deterioration of, of the brick. 
And, and so there is a science there we're very familiar with. And, um, and you know, we certainly plan to, to keep the authenticity of, of the building as much as possible. So. And you've, you've done excellent work with what you were asked to do. <coughs> Thank you. It's time. Do you want to go to council? Didn't you? No? Okay. Go ahead. Last one. <laughs> My name is Sue Beeson, and I think everybody needs to understand we have a unique situation in Somerville. We have some buildings. The town hall was restored, done beautifully many years ago, and I think everybody appreciates the town hall and what it has to offer. And we can go somewhere and build a brand new building, uh, cheaper probably, and but look what we're using, just as she talked about the uniqueness of the Gordon store, uh, the uniqueness of the Martin House. Uh, I think if you just move to the community and uh, love it, then I think you would love in, in 15 or 20 years when your children have grown up here and had, had uh, access to these old buildings that have been restored, then I think it would mean as much uh, to you as it does to me because my, my children and grandchildren grew up here and I grew up here. And I really think we've got to look at the treasure we have up here and not just look at the money uh, that we might spend. Thank you. Uh, we have council Don Wendelman. I just want to make a comment, really, how all of this is at this point right now. <clears throat> it started many years ago, from the old council, town manager, putting all this together, okay? The vision, et cetera, et cetera. But the biggest part, in my opinion, that has not been considered, moving this all along, is the money. 3.7 million, we got about seven or eight million in the bank reserve Six. somewhere in there anyway. Six. <laughs> but none of that is taken into consideration in my opinion. And then to follow up with that, then you hear questions like now, well, is there any way to find grants? Is there any way to find that? Those are questions that should have been asked uh, eight years ago or six years ago. You don't ask them when you have all of this going on and then all of a sudden say, well, how am I going to pay for all this? Well, we're Summerfield. You want your taxes raised. That's how it's going to be paid for. But my whole point in saying this, and I'll be quiet, is this. To do so many projects and keep buying property, buying homes, doing all this, and then you say, well, here's what our plan is now. But then the big question is, how do you pay for it? But it's like, well, don't worry about that right now. We'll figure it out later. That's all right. Thank you. Um, we have council council. Oh, go ahead. Jason. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to make a quick point that, um, you know, just try to, I can't speak to all of the properties because that's out of, out of 